Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update March 17th, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. This is episode 513 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In today's episode, Under the Skin airs its finale. Blue Whisper's director responds to Ellen Ren's muscle suit embarrassment. The aftermath of Deng Lun being exposed for tax evasion. And Han So Hee will not repay her mother's debts. But first, here's what's recently premiered, three dramas for today and yesterday. Be My Princess is a modern drama starring Jeremy Xu and Zhou Jiecheng and it premiered yesterday, March 16th. According to Aichi, the drama follows a revered actor played by Jeremy Xu, who stars opposite a rookie actor played by Zhou Jiecheng in a Ming Dynasty drama. One day, Jeremy Xu's character gets into an accident and becomes his character in the drama. He also only recognizes Zhou Jiecheng's character as the princess she plays in the drama, and she plays along to help him recover. Jeremy Xu is just coming off the autumn ballad with Bridget Chow. Fans who enjoyed his work in that will have another drama of his to look forward to. However, I skimmed through the first episode of Be My Princess and it looks like he's overdubbed, so he will sound different. In fact, both he and Zhou Jiecheng are overdubbed, which is not ideal especially because the rest of the cast are not. Be My Princess is slated for 30 episodes and is available on IQ.com with English subs. The Blue Whisper is a fantasy costume drama starring Del Raba and Ellen Rin and it premiered earlier today. This is part 1 of 2 of The Blue Whisper. Still no word as to when part 2 will air, but I imagine it won't be too long after part 1 ends. As Baidu explains it, The Blue Whisper follows a princess played by Dilraba, who is a talented demon master. She has the ability to control demons. Ellen Rin plays a shark demon who is sent to her to be tamed. The Blue Whisper's production is one of the smoothest of a decent-sized costume drama that I've seen in a while. They started filming in February last year, wrapped in June, and got their record number in December, and now, three months later, they're premiering. That's around 13 months from beginning of filming to premiering, very fast indeed. The drama is slated for 22 episodes and is available on Yuku, no English subs at the moment. On YouTube, Croton has been airing its trailers, so it may air episodes shortly. I'll keep an eye on that. And lastly, Life is a Long Quiet River is a family modern drama starring Hai Qing and Tong Yao, and it premiered earlier today as well. According to Baidu, the two lead actresses play in-laws with a fractured relationship, and the drama follows how they try to work things out. Feng Xiaofeng co-stars as Tong Yao's character's childhood sweetheart. Life is a Long Quiet River is slated for 36 episodes and is available on IQ.com with English subs. And that's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, Under the Skin aired its finale yesterday. As this Sino article published yesterday describes it, Tan Jianchi and Jing Shijia team up to solve the final mystery. More than a few have suggested I watch Under the Skin. Admittedly, I haven't started it yet, but it is on my to-watch list. The drama was last week's top web drama of the week. Under the Skin is a crime modern drama starring Tan Jianchi and Jing Shijia, and it premiered on March 6th. As IGE explains it, a cop teams up with a criminal profiler to solve cases. The twist is that years ago, the criminal profiler painted a picture which inadvertently led to an undercover agent being exposed and killed. The drama is available on IQ.com with English subs. It runs 20 episodes with the last one airing yesterday. During its run, Under the Skin often trended on social media, and the actors were showered with praise. Many fans are clamoring for a second season. As well, according to Sina, the drama's depiction of portrait artists have won the praise and approval of many professional portrait artists in the industry. 
Next up for drama news, here's a Cinna article I came across that I thought I'd share. Muscle suit special effects caused controversy. The Blue Whispers director responds. I wonder if you guys remember this one. Back in October last year, I did a segment on this. I'd shared an article titled, Super Embarrassing, Ellen Wren in The Blue Whisper shows strong abs and chest muscles, but it's fake as he's wearing a muscle suit. And it's basically as the title says. In some shots in The Blue Whisper, it looks like Ellen put in some work to sculpt his body. It's quite believable and commendable. But then in some other shots, it's quite clear that his body was either digitally altered, or he was just wearing a muscle suit. Not unlike the ones you can find online and wear for cosplay, or Halloween, or something like that. Netizens then dug up this picture taken on the Blue Whisper set, which shows the top of the muscle suit around his neck. The whole thing was a point of discussion back then, but according to Senna, Blue Whisper's director addressed it recently. The article didn't mention his name, but Blue Whisper's director is Grammy Chu, so I'm gonna assume it's him. When asked to comment about Ellen's muscle suit being labeled as unprofessional, he said, Ellen Ren is very professional. He's not disrespectful to his work. Considering that the merman's tail was designed to be relatively large, the muscle suit was used to be proportionate to it. Furthermore, we were filming in the summer, and he was wearing the muscle suit, which was actually pretty hard. The director also said that he was aware of the feedback about the muscle suit, and he tried to fix it with special effects in post-production so that he could give audiences what they want. That's a good response to an awkward situation if you ask me. Moving on, celebrity news, and I'll begin with a follow-up to last episode's segment on Peng Lun. According to news that broke two days ago, Peng Lun was caught evading taxes and was ordered to pay 106 million RMB, approximately 16.6 .6 million US dollars, in back taxes, late fees, and fines. Shanghai tax authorities found that between 2019 and 2020, Teng Lun made false declarations and evaded paying 47.65 million RMB and underpaid 14 million RMB in personal income taxes. They also revealed that when they first found anomalies in his tax data, they reminded and urged him to make rectifications, but still found his actions to be insufficient. However, he was said to be cooperative during the investigation and took the initiative to pay 45 million RMB in back taxes. He also reported other tax violations that the authorities hadn't yet found. He issued an apology and said that he had self-reflected and that he was willing to accept all responsibility and consequences. Tax evasion is certainly not unheard of in the Chinese entertainment circle. It's something that a few other celebs have been exposed of doing in the past. Fan Bingbing went through the same thing. She was outed by talk show host Choi Yongyuan. Zheng Shuang also went through it. She had the surrogacy controversy that kind of opened the door to it. But Deng Lun's thing kind of came out of nowhere. I for one was certainly surprised when I read about it. In any case, it's happened, and many are asking what's next for him now. Is he cancelled? What about his works, past and upcoming? Well, first off, his social media accounts have been removed. That includes his personal and studio Weibo, and his Douyin. Some netizens also found that Yuku and Aichi have removed his name from many of his dramas, including Ashes of Love, Sweet Dreams, and My True Friend. His name's also been scrubbed from the movie The Yin Yang Master, Dream of Eternity. Then there are questions about his upcoming drama Night Wanderer in which he stars with Nini. They haven't said anything on their Weibo page yet, but personally, I'm not optimistic about it airing anytime soon. According to Wa, the TV show Who's the Murderer Season 7, which features Teng Lun, postponed an upcoming episode. Additionally, many brands that Teng Lun endorsed have severed ties. So was it just bad tax advice? Or was someone out to get him? Or did he just think he would never get caught? We'll probably never know. Will he ever make a comeback? Well, if past similar cases are an indication, that would seem unlikely. 
Moving on, here's an 8 days article I came across a few days ago that I thought I'd share with you guys. Korean actress Han So Hee says she will not repay debt for mom, who borrowed money under her name without her knowledge. 27-year-old Han So Hee caught my attention with her performance in the 2021 Netflix Korean drama My Name. She starred in the action-packed, revenge-driven drama with Park Hee Soon. According to 8 Days, Han's agency recently confirmed a rumor saying that her mother, one Mrs. Shin, opened up a bank account under the actor's name when she was still a minor and used it to borrow money without her knowledge. The agency also revealed that a court ruling stated that Han So Hee should not be held responsible for the debt as there's no evidence that she had access to the account. As such, Han has no plans to take responsibility of her mother's debts and hopes that parents will stop abusing the celebrity status of their children to borrow money. According to Korean reports, Han was raised by her grandmother after her parents divorced. Mrs. Shin reportedly had money problems for a long time. Before Han's acting debut in 2017, she had worked 12-hour shifts six days a week to help pay off her mother's debts. However, Mrs. Shin continued to borrow more money and eventually Han put her foot down and cut her off. Difficult as it may seem, sometimes putting your foot down and cutting people off is the right move. Always tough when it comes to money issues that involve family. On that note, it's Thursday today so time for another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. As you guys know, every Sunday we do the top 10 Chinese web and TV dramas of the week. In this segment, I give some of my thoughts and predictions as to who the champions will be. To recap, last week's top web drama was Under the Skin starring Tan Jian Shi and Jing Shijia. And the top TV drama was A Lifelong Journey starring Lei Jiayin and Yin Tao. So two highly anticipated dramas premiered this week, The Oath of Love and Blue Whisper. Blue Whisper premiered earlier today, so it's highly unlikely that it will garner enough points to be champion. However, The Oath of Love, which is categorized as the TV drama, might have a chance as it premiered on Tuesday. I'm gonna back Under the Skin to retain its crown as the top web drama for a second week in a row. And despite it having two days fewer points, I'm gonna back The Oath of Love starring Yang Zi and Xiao Chan to be champion for the first time since its premiere. And that's been another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. What are your predictions for this Sunday? And before I let you guys go, I want to give a big virtual hug to Valerie R who recently became a patron on my Patreon. Thank you for your support, Valerie. And that brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.